Yes, well, images of old penguin suits, wigs and briefcases, no doubt. But not this gentleman. Yes, he is a lawyer, but as an activist and champion of human rights, there is more to Edmund Bond than litigation and lawsuits. So today, we're laying down the law. Like, what made you decide to take up law? Was it shoved down your throat by your parents because they're like, you either become a doctor or lawyer or did you actually want to practice? There was just like four subjects to, you could choose from mm -hmm. based on what your parents would give you. What do you mean? So engineering, okay. uh, medicine, yeah. law and accountancy. And when you did A-levels, you, you just did whatever you, you think you could score. But then after a while, when you spend some time with your friends uh, overseas, you, you realise that everybody wanted to do law because it was the most exciting thing. So you just did law. So you did so law because, you're, because your friends all decided it was the yeah. most exciting thing to do and you just wanted to be a part of the same group of people? Yeah. It was... It, I'm actually an accidental lawyer. An accidental lawyer. A reluctant like lawyer. <laughs> it's the best times of um, my life, I think. Okay. Because I think there was much more freedom mm -hmm. uh, in the UK and the way they uh, conducted themselves mm. and the types of freedom that they practice. And that's where you pick up some good habits and some bad habits. Okay. How much, how much um, did life in the UK impact you? A lot. Uh, yeah. I think at that time it was the height of the European Court of Human Rights where there would be a lot of cases, there would be a lot of new developments in human rights law. It was really, really exciting. They were talking about things like uh, labour law, yeah. uh, talking about gender equality, talking uh -huh. about LGBT, speaking about freedom of expression. So these things were rather new and was really exciting because it was a, a, a new... Um, there was new space for you to carve out a new mm -hmm. law and that's something that was exciting. Um, you know, because of the, the people that you were linked with and because of what you were studying, I mean, is, was that the only reason you were exposed to this? Do you think the general public over there are equally as involved? No, I think the conversations that you have uh, over coffee and mm. even reading the newspapers and the conversations about freedoms are so much more advanced there. Mm. And you see public assemblies almost every day okay, in different, yeah, yeah. every different corner of the street. Yeah. So that really impacted uh, me and uh, coming back, seeing how things are slightly more different here, yeah. I think galvanized me and a lot of different people to try and uh, change things. So tell me a little bit about the few projects that you've started running in 2009. You started My Constitution, right? What was that all about? And what inspired you to start that? The My Constitution yeah. campaign is a campaign of the Bar Council. Mm -hmm. And I think we realised that uh, our students mm -hmm. were not really fully understanding their rights. When you say our students, who are you referring to? Uh, kids uh, in Standard 1. Yeah. They didn't know about their constitution. Mm -hmm. And we just repeat the Rukun Negara, yeah. Keluruhan, Pelembagan. Yeah. But nobody actually, nobody actually understands what it means. What it means. We, yeah. I, I didn't know what it meant. Yeah. I didn't know what Kaluruhan meant or Pelembagan meant. Yeah. So if if our children are what is Kaluruhan Pelembagan? That the constitution is supreme. Mm -hmm. That's Supremacy. the highest law of the land. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we wanted to start that, and we wanted to work with government mm -hmm. to try and bring constitutional rights mm -hmm. and how our system works yeah. as a curriculum for children. Mm -hmm. And so we did that um, campaign. We simplified the constitution and I think that How do you simplify the constitution for, for kids? Well, for younger ones, we, we do very simple videos and infographics. Mm -hmm. For children who are younger than that, we do cartoons mm -hmm. uh, and games. Okay. And it's just education. And if you don't educate your children or our children yeah. from young about their rights and yeah. about how the system is run, mm -hmm. you will have apathetic society. You yeah. have you don't have a society that's a caring society, you will not be a developed society that you want to be. If you say uh, our older generation mm -hmm. or even ourselves mm -hmm. have uh, failed this generation, there may be some merit in that. We need to try and do something about um, what we... Reviving. We, yeah, Reviving or, you know, trying to fill that yes. gap, yeah. trying to help this generation now come up and try and compete with the world. We, you know, all over the world, uh, things are changing. Mm. And if you compare ourselves with the European countries and the Americans, for example, mm -hmm. you know, the kids are so independent, creative, uh, mm -hmm. they know their rights, they mm -hmm. are very vocal about yeah. things. When you, when you talk about education, mm -hmm. you necessarily also sometimes have to take uh, a certain position. Yeah. 
So if books are banned, for example, you yeah. know you have freedom of expression. Yeah. You, you need to tell people about that. Yeah. If you're not allowed to go to a religious institution, yeah. you you have freedom of religion. Yeah. So you need to educate people about that. Yeah. So people again will will critique the campaign, but yeah. you can't make everybody happy. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, it's just about the, edu- the the education about the campaign. You yeah. may disagree with the view, mm-hmm. but as a lawyer, mm-hmm. I'm conversing and I'm giving you this. Article ten or Article eight in the Constitution, mm. which says this, you mm-hmm. know. So, and what does this yeah. Constitution uh, say? What does this article say? So that's what I'm. I'm just informing you about. Yeah. And uh, and basically make it relevant to people's everyday lives. Make right? it more accessible. Yeah. Make it uh, in layperson's language. Yeah. We got in all the different languages. Yeah. Make it uh, exciting for mm. the children. So we've done the, yeah. the videos which have uh, different types of themes and stories to it. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about Undi Malaysia. Um, <clears throat> when, when you came up with this whole idea, what did you have in mind? On the ground, what really was lacking in terms of empowerment. So mm. you can be educated, but you may not be activated in wanting to do something to help the yeah. oppressed, the poor, the marginalized when you see uh, uh, injustice. Mm-hmm. So we decided on this holistic type of movement made up of four pillars about mm-hmm. trying to get credible information about engaging your members of parliament mm-hmm. and thirdly about taking action mm-hmm. not just about complaining mm-hmm. uh, and how do you take action and then the fourth one is getting together different people of uh, the same similar mind mm-hmm. on s- certain issues to try and campaign to improve those issues i think people start to see only malaysia as uh, the vote and yeah. a lot of people are not really interested in the vote mm-hmm. but i think the word use undi is not particularly just uh, referring to the vote where yeah. you vote at general elections mm-hmm. is about using your whole body yeah. to vote using uh, taking action yeah. apart from just you know that vote once every five years mm-hmm. is actually about activating and giving ideas about how you can solve your own problems in your own community yeah. without relying on politicians mm. at all okay uh, and the idea about uh, our representative democracy system mm-hmm. uh, we critique the system that it no longer represents the 28 million of us yeah and we say that um, there needs to be greater participation by the people yeah. and the system doesn't allow that kind of participation uh, we need to have that kind of discourse we need to start that kind of discourse and that kind of conversations yeah. about getting more uh, people involved in the democracy rather than just your 222 members of parliament mm-hmm.